How's it going everyone? As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne and this is Deck Ready, my channel all about the Steam Deck. And you know, other gaming handhelds when I have the chance to talk about them like I do today because I've got two big news stories to cover. The first one is that SteamOS 3.6 has been released in the preview channel and it's one of the biggest and best Steam Deck updates yet. I know everyone says that every time, but this one is really good. And then the second news story is all about the like bizarre launch or like reveal event around the new ROG Ally X. I don't think Asus understands how to announce things because this is crazy. But yeah, let's jump right in and talk about this new Steam Deck update. This one is in preview right now. So you need to be in the beta channel and then the preview channel. And I've mentioned in the past on the channel that I don't really love being in the beta channel, but this one pushed me over the edge. The reason I don't love the beta channel is because last summer I was playing through the original release of Alan Wake on my Steam Deck and I was playing at 40 FPS and it was still getting weird stuttering every 30 seconds. I did a ton of stuff to try and fix it, it turned out it was because I was on the beta channel. So once I switched back to the stable one, it fixed everything. But again, this is like a big enough update where I really want to try things out because not only does it improve things on the Steam Deck side, it also improves things allegedly with the dock, which you know, if you watch the channel, I've had a lot of problems with the official Valve dock. So the first thing they did is they updated the base Linux that the actual Steam Deck uses. So it's a newer version of Arch Linux, which is cool. There's new features there. I saw one that was added is that now if you're looking at video files on your desktop, you'll get a little video preview, which is nice because I love that on the Mac. Like when I'm editing videos, I can just hit space and then the video will start playing. My camera separates video clips into a billion different clips. Like if I record for 20 or 30 minutes, it'll actually be like four, four gigabyte files. So I love being able to just preview those on the deck when I'm recording games and everything like that. But one of the coolest things they updated is Bluetooth connectivity, specifically with AirPods. So I'm sure you've ran into this issue if you've ever tried to use wireless headphones with the Steam Deck, you get pretty gnarly latency, whether you're on the LCD model or the OLED model. This should clean that up a little bit. Uh, I don't really use AirPods with the Steam Deck. I actually got the Razer Hammerhead Hyperspeed, whatever. I don't really know what it's called. Uh, they came with a little dongle that's USB-C, which is nice because that gives you zero latency. But if you use Bluetooth with them, if you just triple tap on the right one, it gives you a low latency mode that's perfect. Like it's a gaming mode is what they call it. And you can notice a little bit of sound degradation, but what you get in exchange for that is pretty much latency-free Bluetooth audio. I use them with my main gaming PC and my Steam Deck all the time. I really can't recommend them enough. But if you're someone who uses like Sony XM3, 4, or 5s, you use the Pulse Elite from PlayStation with Bluetooth, you don't have a wireless dongle that plugs into the USB-C port, uh, this update really should help you when you're using Bluetooth earbuds or over the ear headphones. The biggest update that comes along with this new SteamOS version though is a new graphics driver. They're using a later version of the Mesa drivers. So you should see performance upticks in pretty much any game you play. The article I read over on PC Gamer said that the person who was writing saw better frame rates, like less stuttering in Cyberpunk 2077. My real world use case for this is I've been playing V Rising a lot on the deck, which man, if you're looking for a game to just sink hundreds of hours into, whether you're playing multiplayer or single, player. I cannot recommend V Rising enough. It's like if you made Castlevania an action RPG and then added in a whole castle building sim that's like amazing. Like both sides of the coin are just as good as the other. They don't skimp on the ARPG and they don't skimp on the castle building. Uh, I was playing that and I did notice that when I would come up to my castle, which is this like two floor monstrosity, I would get a little bit of stuttering as it would load in all the assets. But after this beta update, that stuttering is gone. So it's not going to give you like like overall more frames, like you're not gonna go from 40 to 60 in games that are running at 40 for you. You're gonna get smoother frame rates across the board, which I'd argue is more important. I'm always on the Steam Deck advocating for a smooth frame rate over the highest overall frame rate. I'm totally fine playing games at 30 FPS or 40 FPS because it's a handheld system, right? Like I don't need 60 FPS in every game on that because if I want 60 FPS, I could just go over to my main gaming PC. I get 60 FPS all day long. It's not an issue at all. Another cool thing they did is give you the ability to overclock your Steam Deck from the BIOS. All the articles and like the breakdown I read made it seem like this is just for the LCD at this point in time, but I have noticed a lot of people are overclocking their Steam Decks to get a little bit more performance out of them. Of course, that's probably going to result in reduced battery life, but if you're someone who really wants 60 FPS out of your games, like you're playing a game that's hovering around 55, 58, and then you get 60 with overclocking, I'm not going to like yuck your yum there. And another cool thing they've added with this update 
update is the ability to boot the Steam Deck from an SD card. So before, if you installed Windows on a micro SD card, you would have to turn the Steam Deck all the way off, and then I'm pretty sure hold either the minus or plus button to get to the BIOS menu when you turn it back on, select this SD card as the boot up device, and then you'd be in Windows. Now, if you just leave that SD card in your Steam Deck with Windows installed on it, you can set it as the boot device, so when you restart your Steam Deck, it'll always just boot right into Windows. It's surprising it took this long, but I'm glad the feature is here because it's one step closer to being able to just straight up dual boot Windows on the Steam Deck the correct way. Another big update the Steam Deck LCD got is there's Mura compensation. So I guess what Mira or Mura is, is basically when the Steam Deck is running hot underneath the LCD screen, it can kind of degrade the performance of the screen itself and give it like a little bit grainier of a look over time. So built into the operating system now, there's Mura compensation. I never noticed this on my LCD Steam Deck and I haven't used it since the Steam Deck OLED came out, obviously. So I don't really know how widespread this issue is, but if it's affecting you, uh, you'll be happy to know that there's compensation built into the OS at this point in time. But that brings us to the updates for the deck dock. So the first one they've added is HDMI CEC features. So if you have a PS5 or an Apple TV, you know what this is. Basically what it does is it allows that device to control your TV. So if your TV's off and you turn on your Apple TV, it'll not only turn the TV on, but it'll switch it to the correct input. The PS5 has the same feature and now the deck dock has it as well. So if your TV's off, you can actually power it on with your Steam Deck when it's docked, which I think is great. And they've also updated the dock's firmware so that it'll work better with high refresh rate TVs and monitors and TVs that have VRR or monitors that have VRR. I've mentioned this a million times, but my main setup for years was keeping my Steam Deck dock plugged in with my uh, keyboard, my mouse, my monitor, everything I use with my PC setup always plugged into it. And then the USB-C cord that comes off of it, I got like a three foot extender. So if I was using my gaming laptop, I would just plug that into the Thunderbolt port. And if I wanted to switch to the Steam Deck, I would plug the Steam Deck in and have access to a full desktop setup. For some reason in 2024, after the Steam Deck OLED launch, that setup completely broke. So I wasn't able to do that anymore. And what I ended up doing is buying a Razer Thunderbolt dock to match my little Razer setup over there. But this update specifically addresses that issue. So I think I might switch back to the Steam Deck dock because it's just so much smaller and lower profile and it doesn't have garish lights on it that light up my whole desk. It's kind of like a best case scenario if you're someone who uses the Steam Deck dock in this way. And the last thing I'm going to touch on is I noticed this anecdotally, but then I saw it was actually in the patch notes. The Steam OS operating system, like the UI itself, seems to run a lot quicker now after this beta update. Everything moves a lot more smoothly. You're not getting as many drop frames. There's no more delays, which I like. Uh, this was a problem for a long time with the LCD. Like it was extremely slow when the Steam Deck itself launched and then they slowly made it faster over time. And then when the Steam Deck OLED came out, they made it like perfect. And since they've updated that a couple of times, it's actually gotten a little bit slower. So I'm glad that they're going to address that with this update. And I've noticed like it might be placebo or something like that, or just anecdotal evidence, but it is running a whole lot smoother today than it was yesterday before I updated the device because I had to quit V rising to activate the Castlevania DLC I bought. And then I was like, everything's just moving a little bit smoother here, including the store. So I appreciate that update as well. So yeah, like I mentioned, maybe stay away from this if you're not someone who likes troubleshooting at all and you want everything to work, but it does seem like so far this update is mostly working perfectly as intended. So just crossing my fingers that we don't have to wait too long for an official release. And that brings us to the second news story of today's video, which is all about the ROG Ally X. So there was a reveal stream yesterday when I'm recording this video, my friends Rich and Bill over at the Nerd Nest, they kind of reacted live to it after the fact. And I think people were definitely expecting more from Asus in terms of upgrades. Like people weren't expecting an ROG Ally 2 a full year later, but like more of a meaningful upgrade from like the Steam Deck LCD to the OLED level versus what we got. So the new version of the ROG Ally is going to be called the ROG Ally X. And while I'm just gonna say it doesn't really feel like it's worth the upgrade, the one thing that's making me wanna pick one up is the fact that A, I was sent a review unit for the first model. So I've technically never spent any money on an ROG Ally and B, uh, it's black now. They're gonna do a black colorway option, which I have been begging them to do since they released this. I like the white. I think it looks good in contrast to the Steam Deck and the OLED and everything, but I say this with the PS5 all the time. I don't like white tech. I, it attracts dust, it attracts smudges, it gets dirty and aged very quickly. I just like everything to be in black. Like all my cars I've had throughout my entire life are black. I wear black t-shirts every day. My whole basement is set up around the colors of gray and black. I just like black 
stuff. We're just gonna get the two biggest bummers out of the way right off the bat. The first one is that there's no upgrades to the actual chip that's running the device. So the Z1 and Z1 Extreme that it's going to ship with are gonna be the same and run the exact same as the current ROG Ally. So if you were hoping for a little bit more performance overhead to kind of split the gap between the Steam Deck OLED and the ROG Ally, you're probably gonna be a little bit disappointed. The second one is that there's no screen upgrades at all, but I'd argue that's not as bad because the screen on the ROG Ally is really good. It's not OLED of course, but the color is really good. The glass they use looks really nice. I don't like that it's 16 by nine. I have a 16 by 10 laptop and I don't think I could ever go back. Of course, the Steam Deck is 16 by 10 as well. I just like that little bit of extra vertical space you get and it makes navigating the operating system when you're in desktop mode just a whole lot easier. On the ROG Ally, having everything in Windows kind of scrunched down vertically makes it just a little bit more difficult to interact with and I just, I don't like that. I was hoping they would kind of move maybe to an OLED screen or maybe a 16 by 10 screen since I know that's one big complaint with the current ROG Ally, but those are really the two biggest downsides and I I think they're big enough where people who already own an ROG Ally could kind of wait for the ROG Ally 2 versus grabbing the ROG Ally X. The biggest upgrade though that might push you over the edge is battery life. Asus said in an interview with The Verge that like uh, they were aware before they shipped the ROG Ally that battery life was going to be a big problem for people. That's the biggest reason why I don't use this thing pretty much at all. You're basically chained to a battery bank if you want to use it portably like outside your house. Because if you're playing at really any AAA game, you're looking at like 90 minutes of battery life at max and most of the flights I take are more than 90 minutes and I just don't like running the battery down completely on these things. So when I'm putting my gaming consoles that I want to take on a trip in a bag, I look at the ROG Ally and I'm like, maybe next time, little buddy, because I, when I use the OLED, I don't have to bring a battery bank. The battery life is just great on the OLED compared to the Steam Deck LCD. Unfortunately, they're not saying how much better the battery life is going to be, but they're saying if it's a big problem for you, you are going to notice an increase. I really would love it if it lasted two and a half to three hours playing AAA games, because that's what I get out of the Steam Deck OLED. Anything that can provide parity and not become a roadblock when I switch between devices, I would appreciate. I don't like that they're not showing it off either. They say that the chassis has been revised, but they showed just an outline of it with the cool light up uh, light up uh, stick modules and everything like that. I just, it's like, if you're announcing the thing, just show it off. Don't do, do these like drip feed incremental teases where you show us little bit by bit what it's going to look like. You know what I'm saying? But speaking of the joysticks, there is going to be an upgrade to those as well to make it much more repairable. Like the modules are completely changing and they're making it easier to take apart. I don't really know how much easier they could make it because upgrading the SSD in this thing is pretty dead simple. It's just a couple of screws and the back pops right off. They're also doing something to address the SD card problem, which they've never admitted was a problem. I appreciate that of course, because I ran into that issue and it seems like pretty much everyone who used the ROG Ally has run into either the SD card not mounting or it totally frying the actual micro SD card that you put inside the ROG Ally. So clearly something needed to be changed there because they never admitted what was actually wrong. We're not going to know until we get a full teardown of this thing, but it's good to know that they address the biggest problem with the current ROG Ally. And then the last thing that's really bugging me with this upgrade is that it seems like they're not keeping the price the same or lowering it. They're actually going to raise it. And I'd understand that if, you know, they did what they did at Valve, which is increase the overall overall speed and performance while also adding an OLED screen and making meaningful updates to the hardware itself. But like I mentioned at the beginning of the segment, we're not getting any upgrades to the Z1 Extreme that it ships with, so, or the screen. So like, yeah, I don't think it's really justified to increase the price, especially when people have been getting these things on discount pretty much since they came out through buying them open box or getting them on sale at Best Buy, you know? Like clearly they missed the mark on the price of this thing in the first model. So raising the price, doesn't really seem like a justified thing to do, if you ask me. Still, when you look at all the Windows handheld options out there, the ROG Ally still comes in as the fan favorite, and I feel like the small core fan base is probably going to upgrade to this thing. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can get a review unit, but I, if I can't, I'll probably pick one up as well, just to like do a little quick video on it, and hopefully those battery life increases are enough to make it worthy of bringing in my backpack, maybe even alongside my Steam Deck OLED. But now I'd love to hear from you down in the comments below are you going to pick this thing up? Are you underwhelmed like I am? I'm just really curious. Remember to subscribe and set your notifications to all if you haven't already. As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and shape on.